Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you guys' Tuesday went pretty well. Alright, so, just gonna jump right into the news. Free online multiplayer for all PS4 players this weekend, so, it's gonna be getting December 11th, so Friday, 12.01 a.m. Pacific, through Sunday, December 13th, at 11.59 Pacific Time, so, Pacific Time is California Time, like two hours behind Central Time, whatever. So, I look forward to that, and I guess if you don't have PlayStation Plus, they can get you a good experience. See if you guys want to buy PlayStation Plus. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it because they don't give away any good free games, and I don't play online multiplayer. So, long story short, if you guys want to try it out, go ahead and do it. It's going to be free this weekend. All right, moving on. So, this is apparently why why Sony thinks PS4 is a massive hit, okay? It, it, it makes sense, but Yoshida did say, you know... Um, why did they do better than uh, PS4 and Xbox One than the PS3 and 360? He said it's uh, it's a harder question almost to answer. But he did say the focus completely shifted with the PS4 compared to the PS3. And with the PS3, Sony attempted to build a supercomputer, he said. The idea was that developers would quickly understand how to make the most of the hardware and platform would be a uh, rousing success. But that didn't exactly happen because obviously the PS4 had some weird, weird code in the game and... Uh, yeah, there's that. Weird code, and they, I don't know, it just really didn't work out. But the PS3 cell processor wasn't the simplest to understand. It took a long time to get full advantage of the system. So what really focused on the PS4 was easy development and ease of use by consumers and developers. He said, and I think that's paying off handsomely. So he did go on to say that uh, they're attracting a ton of indie developers, and it's really, really helping the PS4 overall. I, I don't know about that, but... Whatever, you know, he's saying what he can, I guess. And it combines a vibrant, exciting offering for consumers, and I feel like it can be compared to the excitement of the PS1 days, almost. I don't know, as of November, they sold 30 million units, so, I mean, that's good. I mean, console games not isn't dying anytime soon. So, I mean, that's something to look forward to, I guess, right? I mean, I could be wrong on that, but whatever. There's a couple more things I want to talk about here. Uh, <laughs> this one, I don't even know. Apparently, you can use your Xbox One to try on clothes at home. I was like, all right, that's kind of weird. So I guess high-tech fitting rooms, you know, have been around for a while. And most of them are inside a retail location like your Walmart. Or does Walmart have fitting rooms? I I don't know. I, Target maybe does. Yeah, I think Target does. Like clothing stores, okay. But now Xbox One owners can have personally set up in the comforts of their living room thanks to a new shopping app called The Mall. And it's the Connect motion tracking camera and a virtual wardrobe, which has in-home fittings. Launching with Von Bismarck, a Dublin-based television e-commerce company. Um, it allows Xbox users to browse for new clothes before standing in front of their TV to try them on in real time. So, I mean, this this is a cool idea. I can see where they're getting at. I mean, maybe if they have other clothing stores that do this as well, that's going to be really nice. You don't have to even leave your house. You're like, oh, I like this shirt. You know, like, cool. I'll go to your website and buy it. Like, I really like the idea. I mean, it sounds stupid, but I mean, I really like this idea. I, they said you can make the purchase using the Power Power Tag app, and the payment scans on the screen or physical QR code complete the shopping experience on the Android and iOS software stores. Payment and shipping details. You don't have to worry about struggling to enter all your info with the Xbox controller. Cool. You can go right to your phone and do it, like I said. And it's launched in the states today. And selections from brands like Soccer Pro, Style, PB, Grays, and Go to Go Games. Uh, just beginning to expect a more variety in the future. So, I mean, personally, I really like this idea, like I said. It, it, it's going to expand on so many other things. Like, maybe they're going to have Aeropostale or American Eagle have this, too. That'd be a really cool idea, I, I think. I mean, I really like the idea. I mean, then you don't have to go to physically drive if you live, like, 20 or 30 minutes from the, like, mall or whatever. You don't have to physically drive there. You can just go on your TV and say, hey, I want to try this shirt on. I really like it. Let's see if it fits or not fits. Let's see if it looks good. You know, something like that. I, I honestly really like this idea. All right, so here's what Sony needs to do to support backwards compatibility properly on PS4. And they said region-free backwards compatibility on disc-based PS1 and PS2 games. So I guess if you already have a collection, then they should be playable on the PS4, which shouldn't really be an issue to begin with. But I, you guys didn't see all, yesterday's video. I talked about that, and I got rage. It was raging hard yesterday. So it's thankfully, you know, regard of itself and allowing to have older games from any region to be played on the system. After all, you can do it on PC, so, I mean, why wouldn't you want to do it on PS4? And, personally, yeah, they should have the discs. If you already own the discs, you should already be able to play them. 
Support previously purchased on PSN purchases of PS1 and PS2 games? Yes, I support that 110%. Basically, if you bought a game for your PSP uh, on your PS3 and Vita, you should be able to have them on your store. Like, I bought Bully, Vice City, San Andreas. Um, I, I can only come up with those three right now, but I bought those. They should carry over to my PS4. If I already bought the games, why, can't, why don't they carry over? Oh, yeah, Vice City Stories as well. Why can't they carry over? So I don't understand that. Backwards compatibility on both download and disc based PS3, PS3, blah, 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 PS3 games. Uh, they've done very well with that. Uh, Microsoft did, and it's a less potent system. Why Sony can't do the same for the PS4. So opening up to all games on the PS3 library would be great too, and put Microsoft in a back foot in a big way. So basically, what they're saying there, they can't do it with PS3 games with, with PS4. I don't know where this article, how they thought that was a good idea. They can't do it. The architecture was all effed up with the coding and everything. They can't physically do it. I don't mind playing PS2 games. If they can get PS2 on games on discs, there we go. PlayStation Plus support for save game files from older ga uh, consoles. That'd be really cool so you can carry over your save data so you don't have to re-beat the game or whatever, replay the game. So honestly, I think th they could turn it around like realistically. Um, they just need to, to come in, make an emulator, and they'll be all good. So yeah, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. I really hope they can turn this around and make it be like really good. So, yeah. All right, so moving on, last piece of news. I am very excited for this game. MLB 16, the show was announced. Comes out March 29th, 2016. I think, I don't know what day 15 came out last year, but they're going to have a standard edition or an MVP edition for $9.99 more, $10 more. A couple things I saw in the trailer. Willow Grounds. I, I hope they include more classic stadiums than just the, what was it, six or eight of them that were on the PS3 version. Uh, but I saw Polo Ground, so that tells me Classic Stadiums are back. I, I saw Tony Gwynn Jun or Tony Gwynn Senior, so he's probably going to be on the game now. And I also saw Retractable Roofs. Okay, one thing I saw that I didn't like about the game. Okay, they had this slow motion thing. Like I believe it was Josh Allison dove. By the way, Josh Allison's cover athlete. He dove, pushed circle to 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 do to little to, to catch the ball or whatever, get the ball. I don't know. It looks stupid. I hope, I pray you can turn that off, because that doesn't even look. That doesn't even look remotely fun. It looks like a freaking free-to-play game, arcade style. And yeah, that's not, that's like one of the only things I saw that I didn't like about the game. I hope the commentary is a little bit different. Graphically, the game looks the same. I hope they can at least improve it a little bit. Obviously, they have a few months yet until the game comes out. Three months about. So, obvious, uh, man, I, I hope they don't F this up. Like, I know sports games don't improve much every year, but I want them to improve upon it at least a little bit, you know? So, like I said, the MVP edition comes with a physical copy of the game, obviously, steelbook case, and a roughly $76 in stubs, packs, and avatars for the PS4. There's 5,000 stubs, one sponsor pack, 10 standard packs. Who cares? I don't play the frickin' Diamond Dynasty anyways. I 31 themed avatars, a single opening day pack, and it costs $70. So, or the 16, the show del digital deluxe edition includes, it's $99. Holy shnikes, that's a sh shit ton of money. Alright, so 11,000 in stubs, one sponsor pack, 20, 20 standard packs, 31 PS4 MLB themed avatars, and 3 opening day packs. That's roughly $140 in digital extras. Fuck that. I'm not gonna pay $100 for MLB the fucking the show. I'm just gonna get the probably the standard one, because fuck. Why would I get anything else? So, that's cool. You know, MLB 16, the show is coming out soon. I'm um, not sure if there's going to be a baseball game on the Xbox One anytime soon. I wouldn't think so because I think all the users that like baseball have bought in a PS4 just for the show. Maybe they play Xbox sometime else. So I don't think it's going to get a baseball game anytime soon. Rumor has it the MLB wants way too much money for the license and is not worth it because I think MLB 15 across all three units. I did see the Vita version is dead for 16 though. So I don't think there's going to be a Vita, ver a Vita ver version for this. And... So across all three platforms for 15 the show, they only sold about 750,000 copies. I don't even think they sold that. So is the market really there? Not so much. All right, so that's really all I want to talk about today, guys. Make sure to like this video, comment, friend, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.